Hey everyone, Port ISM. Welcome to my full condensed video build of Tamiya's 124th Mercedes SLR McLaren. So yes, we're back for another full video build of a fantastic Tamiya kit I've wanted to build for quite some time. But always been a bit put off with how complicated a kit it is. And you know what? It didn't even turn out to be that bad. So um, this was inspired by a video I watched from Harry Metcalf on Harry's Garage where he reviewed this kit in this colour. Kit. This car in this colour. And I thought, wow, that's a great colour. Found the colour of Pro Scale. Uh, mixed it up, and yep, there we go. Thought, right, here we go. It's time to do this kit. It's a kit I've been daunted by for quite some time, but like I say, it actually wasn't that bad to build, and yeah, not too complex to do. Like I say, this is the condensed build. If you watched a full four part, it is a big um, build on this one. Four part, thank many videos over on my Patreon. Become a, a patron down below. Loads of other perks, which I'll chat about at the end of the video. You get early access and all the builds. You get the full build videos as well. You can click that down below and become a supporter of mine. Anyway, let's jump in and get started with the build. Okay, so we're starting with parts cleanup. Now, we've got lots of separate panels on this kit. It is quite a complex kit to build. There's at least seven or eight body panels that need prepping, priming, painting, etc. So we've gone around, removed any seam lines or sprue points with our UMP sanders, and we're then going to flat the surface with our Tamiya 2000 grit sponge to key it for primer. So quite a nice body to work on. Not really many uh, seam lines on there. All pretty easy to clean up, but obviously preparation is key. So take your time here. Only really one part to glue in place, and that's this little insert in the door that's on both sides. Once we cleaned it all up and keyed all the surface, we can then clean up with a toothbrush to get any sand and dust and debris out of the panel lines, and then hit it with some Pro Scale Paints pre paint degreaser. Uh, that way, we get rid of any nasties off the body where we've had fingerprints or any dust or anything that's landed on the body, and this will give us our perfect primer surface. So, as always, preparation is key. Uh, we have a Poorly prepared surface, it can bite you in the butt a bit later down the line. So we do our very best to minimise any issues from contamination on the body. Like I say, we have the main body, we've got a bonnet, we've got two side panels, we've got the two doors, we've got the front bumper, we've got the wing mirrors. So lots of parts to prep and paint. In the spray booth, we've got some Pro Scale Grey Primer. We've dusted over the model with our Tamiya anti-static brush. We've got our Iwata Revolution 0.3 um, CR3 airbrush. And we're going to put several light coats of primer on the body to give us a really good key to uh, paint on. So first coat, we're just going around. Not a heavy coat at all. Just getting the coverage um, over the body. Getting all those nooks and crannies around the lights, the door shuts, all around the front. Um, like I say, it is a multi-part body, this, so you need to be careful that A, you get everything painted properly, and B, don't forget any bits. Go through your instruction book, mark off anything that's painted with a highlighter, and that way you know what needs painting. Brush Pro Scale Primer goes down absolutely beautiful. It is a microfiller primer, so it dries with a little bit of texture, which when you sand it back, it will dry as smooth as silk, uh, and it will give you a phenomenal surface to prime on. Really easy to use. We're spraying about 18 psi here. It's a 0.3 mil needle, so middle ground for needle size, and no issues at all. Um, every coat, give it about five, 10 minutes to flash off, and then come in with your other coats. And I tend to find it takes two to three coats of primer to fully prime a body. But like I say, make sure everything's securely mounted. We've got a 3M double-sided tape uh, on this bottle here to hold it. And everything else is mounted with uh, all pieces of sprue or crocodile clips on sticks. Um, simple. Just something to hold it securely. Uh, but like I said, it is quite a tricky one too because there are multiple panels. So you just need to make sure that you're consistent throughout. Prime, paint and clear coat, everything equally. Um, it's quite easy to do. 
but it's also quite easy to leave parts behind or forget to put a coat on and you can end up with a colour difference. Once the primer is dry, this has been dry now for about six hours. It only needs about an hour, really. Uh, we can flat it back with our two thousand, sorry, our three thousand Tamiya sponge. That way, uh, we fill all those micro imperfections on the body, which is the idea of the primer, and it makes it as smooth as silk and gives us a lovely smooth keyed surface to paint to. Speaking of paint, we've got our Pro Scale Paints Mercedes MSO Green here. So this colour I was inspired by Harry's Garage, Harry Metcalf, who had this car uh, to test uh, a few years back. And it's called, it doesn't really have a name. Uh, it's a Mercedes colour with a Mercedes colour code. It has no name, so I've just called it MSO Green, which is McLaren Special Operations. It's a beautiful metallic green colour, and it's going to look absolutely fantastic on this car. Officially, this car only came in black and silver. I don't like following the norm. I want to do a different colour. And thankfully, I found Harry's video. So we've got the same Iwata Revolution 0.3. Uh, we're going to pour, I think this one gets about eight coats of paint. Nice thin coats. Why so many coats? Well, you're better off with multiple thin coats than heavy. There is no benefit in putting our paint down wet. It will make no difference to the finish. We don't want any, uh, it's not going to dry glossy. It's not how our paint works. You get your gloss from your clear coat. So we concentrate on coat uh, coverage rather coat rather than coverage. Sorry. So multiple light coats going in uh, alternating directions will get us nice even coverage. And obviously on parts like this front bumper, we need to be wary of getting in all those nooks and crannies and all the edges and what have you as well. And like I said before, make sure every coat you put on one body panel, you put on all the others as well. Otherwise, you can end up with a slight color difference, which is noticeable quite badly on multiple part bodies like this so take your time make sure everything gets equal coverage i've sped this up for speed well obviously um just take your time like i say probably seven eight coats on this leaving five minutes in between for it to flash off and then coming back with another light coat so multiple light coats are the key your coverage will build with every coat that you do and on smaller parts be careful because it's easy to flood or overspray them so here we go. We're about, I would say that's about eight coats. If I remember right, I tend to lose track. I always think I'll count and I tend to lose track. And as you can see, we've got a beautiful metallic green shade here. Uh, we've got every nook and cranny all around the front where the bonnet goes, where those wings go, all in the wheel arches, all around the lights, the windows, everywhere. Um, and everything else has been sprayed exactly the same as well. We're about 18 PSI. Uh, I tend to spray 18 and 22. I only spread 22 for 2K. Everything else is about 18 PSI. That is my preferred uh, pressure. Obviously, we've got a respirator on. We've got my bench vent booth on. Uh, I've got my hand covered as well. So take precautions when using any paints. Any paints, you should have a respirator on and a spray booth running. Uh, you shouldn't be breathing anything in. Like I say, just take your time. Make sure everything's securely mounted. Make sure everything gets even coats. And uh, yeah. Just keep painting until you're happy you've got coverage. Every paint is different. Some colours, you only need a couple of coats. Others like this kind of green, you need to build up slowly. Um, so, yeah, there is no hard and fast rule for how many coats you're going to need. It's all down to your eye. But, yeah, I'm happy with this. Like I said, this is about eight coats. You can see the covers built up. And I do alternate coats from side to side to up and down on each uh, alternate coat. That way we get the full coverage in all the body panels and all the nooks and crannies as well. So there we go. There's our lovely Mercedes MSO green done. That's been left to flash off overnight. We're in the booth and we're going to 2K clear coat it now. So I'm wetting my work surface with some clean water. That way if any dust lands on the tissue, it will stick uh, and not get airborne again. Dust is our enemy with 2K. We're going to use the Pro ProScale Paints, which is my own company, uh, 2K clear coat. So this is a two to one mix. You need to listen to this because it gets complicated. This is a two to one mix of clear to hardener. So it's two parts clear, one part hardener. So if we're putting in 10 milliliters of clear. We need five milliliters of a harder activator, hardener activator. So using a pipette, we've got five mil of activator in there. That pipette's single use. Once you've mixed this, throw it away. Don't reuse it and contaminate the other bottles. So give it a good mix up to get the chemical reaction going and then throw that away. And then our activator, 
we recommend a four and a half percent so if you've got a combined 15 millimeter milliliters of clear coat there you need uh, 0.75 mil of clear but lately i've been adding 10 percent to the first uh, mix and then added another subsequent 10 percent for the last one and I'm finding this does make a difference to how the clear coat goes down. I'll cover this in more depth in a later video. I'll do a new video for ProScales 2K, uh, report on my findings, where I am finding it goes down a lot better, being thinned a lot more at the beginning and more so for the last coat. So as you can see, we have the Tammy Antistatic brush on the body. We've got our Iwata Revolution CR5 this time. This is a 0.5mm needle. Uh, 0.3 will work just fine. I just prefer the wider pattern of the 0.5. Uh, we're going to put down a nice semi-gloss first coat. We're at 22 psi. My bench vent boots on. I am double gloved in that left hand. My skin is covered. I got my full face Scott respirator on. I'm on my own in the room. Follow those precautions, and you'll be just fine. As you can see to the left of me, I've got my plastic case where I can put the body in uh, to stop dust standing on it, as I've just pulled a bit of dust off there. Um, but like I say, on the first coat, we want a nice semi-gloss um, clear coat. And again, making sure we get all the recesses, nooks and crannies, all the sills everywhere. Once we're happy with that, that'll go back in our plastic box for five minutes to flash off and go tacky. And we'll work on all the other panels. Now, 2K is especially sticky. So it's very careful. Uh, you need to be very careful that you don't touch any of these parts together because they will stick together and ruin your paint job. So because we've got so many parts, you need some very careful parts management when you're moving things around. It sounds easy. It can be a little bit difficult. So we've got the body and the bonnet as separate parts. Everything else is mounted on this part holder. And I've got to juggle them around in the plastic case um, because we want to keep them dust free as much as possible. So put them in the case, protects any dust from landing on them. So the key is here. Get a clear coat as quick as possible and pop back in the box as soon as possible to get it out of the way. So, yes, that's it. This is our first coat still. It's like I say, semi-gloss first. We're not going for the full gloss treatment just yet. We want this to flash off and go really tacky so that when we put our full wet coat down, um, it will stick and prevent any runs. That's how 2K works. It's pretty simple, but pay more attention to get all the angles and um, getting all the recesses around the windows the edges and what have you and you'll be just fine so we'll let that flash off for five minutes and we're here for our second coat now this is still the first mixture we did which has got 10 percent thinner in it and this time we're going to go around and put our full wet coat down now we're not going to try and get a perfect finish off this coat um, we're just going to get similar coat that we put down first just going even all around the body overlapping lines of wet 2k and then we'll pop it back in the box for 60 seconds or so 90 seconds while we 2k the rest of the parts for the second coat and then what we're going to do is we're going to thin that 2k a bit more for our final coat so while it is a two coat system um, i prefer to do that second coat not as quite as heavy as it should be let it self level because 2k self levels very well Bring it out, have a look. If it needs a bit more, we can give it another coat. So here we go. There's a second coat and all the smaller parts. Now, I've left all this footage in um, just to show the way I do it. A lot of people say they benefit from watching me doing this time and time again. I think it kind of helps people figure out the best way of doing it. Everyone's going to have different ways. You're going to have different thinning ratios if you want. You can experiment with the thinning ratios. Just remember, if you're not comfortable messing about, just stick to the 4.5% we recommend, or the 5% we recommend um, at Pro Scale. Um, but I'm going to experiment a bit more with this, and I'm going to make a new video on covering it. So we may change our uh, recommendations as we go. But like I say, if you're happy doing it the way you've been doing it, don't change it. Uh, but for me, I'm finding thinning a little bit more is beneficial. So again, just being thorough and going around and making sure we get the even clear coats everywhere. They're back in the box. I'm gonna let them flash, uh, sorry, flash off and tack up a bit more. I've poured the mixture back into this uh, medicine cup. That way I can see how much I have. So we want to thin this another 10%. So if we've got 10 milliliters of clear coat there, we want another 10% of thinner, which would be another milliliter of thinner. So again, a fresh pipette. We'll grab another milliliter of thinner. Add that in. And even just that small amount makes a massive difference to how thin it makes it. Um, you can see and feel how easier it sprays when you're spraying it. 
but you also need to be careful that you don't get runs because it's a thinner clear coat it's easy to put too much down and you can end up with a run on the clear coat so yes you've got to be careful uh with this so that's self levels another 90 seconds we're gonna have a quick look around yet yeah, it needs another light coat so it looks like we're putting a lot down but probably 90 percent of this clear coat is missing the body and traveling through into the booth uh, but we're just putting our thinner coat down, which, as you can see, is spraying a lot freer. There we go, being thorough everywhere. And then we'll pop that back, back in our box while we do the rest of the parts. And then we'll go, uh, let it flash off for another 90 seconds, and then take out and have another look. Now, like I say, I have left all the footage in. I don't normally do this, which is why this video is a little bit longer today. But like I said, a lot of people have commented lately saying, Leaving the 2K footage in the Patreon videos is helping them. So I thought I'll leave it into the free one over on ISM. Don't forget, you can get the full, full part, full part, full video build series of this on my Patreon. This is a much more condensed version. Uh, I go a lot more in depth on my Patreon. You can put a Patreon a link down below. There's lots of other benefits as well, which I'll talk about at the end of the video. Like I said, I'm just going to go around all the parts. A quick spray. And then we'll let it self-level in the box and then take it out for one last look. And that's where we use our light in the booth to angle it and see if we need any more. So there we go. There's all the bits done. Have a quick look at the bonnet. Quick look at the roof and the sides. Yeah, all looking good. I think it needs a little bit more. So sadly, I'm off camera, but you can see it. I just spray a little bit more on the roof. Remember with 2K, how this is now is how it's going to dry. So if you have orange peel now, it's going to dry with orange peel. So this should look like glass. It should look absolutely perfect and reflective. No orange peel, no imperfections. You're going to get dust. The dust is inevitable, but we can flat and polish that out later. Right now, you want to do the most thorough job you can with the clear coat and getting it to look as smooth as possible now. And as you can see, I've got a beautiful, nice, smooth clear coat on the bonnet. All the other parts to the left are all done. The doors, the side wings, the bumper and the mirrors are all great as well. And the body is looking fantastic too. So just remember, this is ultra sticky now. So you don't want to let that stick to anything. And we're going to pop it back in our box and let that cure for a good seven days. Meanwhile, we're going to pick up all the other parts. Now, this is a complex kit. There's a full engine, really nice interior. Uh, there's a lot of parts to this. So it deserves... Yeah, it's a good kit. The next one we're going to build is McLaren F1 from Fujimi, which isn't a great kit. I've already finished that one. It's not great at all. This is a beautiful kit, though. And like I say, lots of parts to this. So lots of cleaning up of UMP sanders to get all the sprue marks off and seam lines. And what I'm doing here is I'm putting everything in paint order. I'm trying to go through and figure out what's going to need painting and priming in what color. And here we are now in the booth. So we've got our Water HPC Plus now. We've got some Mr. Service of 1500 black, and we're going to prime everything that needs priming in this. A couple of coats of Mr. Service of black, which is thinned with Mr. Hobby Level and thinner, about 60%. Uh, the hour to HPC is at about 18 psi again. I'm just going to spray everything that needs priming black, black, and then anything that needs priming gray, which is mostly interior, which we're going to do in ochre brown. We've got some Tamiya gray fine surface primer, which has been decanted out of the can. Uh, left out gas, thinned about 10% with Tammy Lacathin with Retarder. And again, we're going to put a couple of coats of light grey primer down in preparation for our interior colour. So everything is primed in one go. Uh, makes life a bit easier. We've got Pro Scale Carbon Ceramic Brakes here. Absolutely beautiful carbon ceramic colour. Uh, if you've not tried this yet, I'd highly recommend it. It looks absolutely phenomenal to paint all the brake discs up with. And then we've got some Pro Scale Metallics. I am adding a whole range of Pro Scale Metallics. We've got about 10 in the range so far. They are superbly finely pigmented metallics. This is our bright aluminium on the supercharger. As you can see, the coverage is phenomenal. They're all pre-thinned, ready to go. And yeah, they lay down super. The, the pigments are so fine. Uh, they are absolutely beautiful. Beautiful color, looking good. So calipers, um, toyed with a few color ideas, ended up with ProScale Titanium Gold, uh, or Titanium Gold, rather. Um, it 
kind of match the Brembo gold to a degree. There's another colour I'll probably do at a later date too. But for me, the titanium gold was probably the way to go. So a couple of light coats on there for these. Like I say, cleaning everything up in batches, priming in one go, painting in one go. While it's more laborious to do it all together, it's quicker in the long run. And it does kind of make a, a production line in your modeling. It does make you more efficient. Um, all these other black parts are going to be painted in Tamiya LP5 semi-gloss black. So you get several coats of that. And the interior, all the leather colour, I'm going with Pro Scale Ochre Brown. One of my favourite colours along with Bordeaux Red and Napa Black. I, I love this colour. It's a beautiful interior colour. So several coats of this. The back of these seats are going to be black. Uh, we need to mask off several areas of the car, including this piece here where we're going to have the ochre brown center part and the outer part will be Napa black leather. There we go. And then the center console in ochre brown as well. So sadly, we've got a load of masking to do as well, which took hours to do. I'm not included in this video, but you can see it in the Patreon video. We've got a lot more in depth because it took so long doing. So we've masked off all the interior. We've masked off the engine as well, or the engine cover. So we can paint this silver down. This will need further masking to paint the red in the center. Pro scale bright aluminium on the engine cover again. And where we've masked off the ochre brown, we've got some pro scale Napa black to complement the ochre brown color on the interior. So just build it up nice and slow. Again, no benefit in going wet coats. We don't want wet coats at all. Just nice light coats, building it up slowly. And that will give us a nice Napa black leather color. Same on the dashboard as well. There we go. So like I say, lots of parts to mask up. It took a long time to mask some of this. Uh, unmasking is quite satisfying. And there we go. There's our Napa Black on ochre brown leather interior, which is looking good. As you can see, our center console is masked up and sprayed. Uh, we've got our Pro Scale Black Flocking in there, which has been done by my wonderful assistant Hannah. And the engine cover has all been painted, masked, uh, sorry, masked and painted up as well. And it's looking really, really good. I used Tamiya X7, sorry, LP7 lacquer on the red parts there. Suspension, we've sprayed in Pro Scale Bright Aluminium, and I'm brush painting it in Tamiya X11 Gloss Enamel. So these brush paints are absolutely wonderful. We're going to paint the engine cover um, strips and SLR logo with X11 uh, uh, chrome silver enamel from Tamiya as well. So a nice steady hand. We can paint these up. And there we go. There's one side. On the rear diffuser, we need to carbon decal it. So using some carbon decal from uh, Tamiya. We can piece this all together. Again, another task that takes forever to do. Uh, for such a obscure thing, you won't really see much on the real car. Uh, on the model, sorry. Um, but I know it's there. It's been done. It's a part of the car. So, yes, it's time well spent. Now, this part of the engine is molded in. Not normally a fan of this. This one's actually really nice. So, it's been brush painted with the same X11 chrome silver enamel. And we're going to brush paint the expansion tank in X1 uh, gloss black enamel as well. We're going to give some of the metallic parts a wash with some thinned Tamiya uh, enamel wash. Obviously, if you put the enamel wash over enamel paint, you can't really wipe it off. So like on this part, which we brush painted, we're going to put the wash on and just leave it alone. Clear parts. Thankfully, the kit comes with kit masks which is always good and as always with these you either get it on first time perfectly like i just did or it'll take you about 20 attempts where you're taking it on and off because it just won't line up so yes it's a uh, pure luck whether you get it but once you've got it in place and you're happy burnish it down with some cotton buds and then we're going to paint this in mr service 1500 black on the inside and we've also primed up the wheels as well now my experience the tammy chrome is a bit of a pig to strip off but it's not your stereotypical chrome you get with kit, so it's quite smooth, and a fine primer over the top is more than fine. The rear diffuser that we um, carboned, we're now going to clear coat in Mr. Hobby Super Clear uh, UV Cut. So several coats of that will give us a nice gloss coat. 
and then we've brush painted the suspension arms on the chassis with the same Tamiya enamel X11 and then we can start building up our braking system and suspension system so we've got our calipers we painted in titanium gold and our disc we painted in uh, carbon ceramic and pro scale building up as per the instructions the calipers have been decaled as well with the brembo logos and clear coated and then we can follow the steps in the instruction manual to get assembly underway so like i say i have cut out a lot of footage of this i had to to make this shorter video today i had 22 hours of combined footage of this build it was a lot so over on my patreon there's four videos that are over half an hour each long I go a lot more in depth on this build. So if you want to access it, you become a patron. Uh, the link's down below. Yes, I know I mention that a lot. I have to. This, this is my job. <laughs> this is what I do. Um, so if you want to do that, there's lots of other perks becoming a patron as well. Uh, I'll talk about it at the end of the video, but you can always cancel at any time. Come over and have a look. And if it's not for you, you can always cancel. But there we go. Getting the suspension subframes in place. Then we can get the engine in place at the back of the car as well some ca glue holding that in then we get our engine cover in place over the top and this brings the engine bay alive a bit because it's a beautiful looking engine cover there we go got some nice vibrant metallics lovely red on there there's some decals on there as well now really brings it alive and then our headlights. So these are built up as per the instructions and then glued in place. Make sure these are in the right position because it's vital where the front bumper fits. And I would check your front bumper fitment after putting these in place as well. Dashboard, we've detailed up with all our leather parts and the metallic center console piece. We've decaled up all the instruments and we're just going to pop in our steering column. Got some CA glue in the hole. Line that up. And miraculously, I didn't break off the uh, indicator stalk, which is... Well done for me because I normally break them off. Steering wheel is in place, which also have been decaled up as well. And then we can get our rear section of the interior glued in place. Beautiful contrasting colours on the leather interior. Then with some CA glue, we can get the seat in place as well. Like I say, we painted the back of the seats. So in they go. There's the pair of them in place now. So, yeah, take your time here. Don't get any super glue on your fingers and ruining your hard work. And then the dashboard can be popped in place as well. Like I say, really nice engine bay, really nice interior on this kit. Uh, we come with a metal chassis on this kit. Tamiya does it with some of the flat bottom cars, uh, some screws, and we can screw it all in place. We've got our wheels assembled, poly capture in the wheels. The front ones clip on to the steering arms the rear ones have this axle that goes through bear in mind that not only are the tires handed the wheels are as well they should be facing a certain direction on each side to refer you to your instructions for that so there we go sits down nice and straight which is always good and then the body works so this has been sat for about a week seven days is the optimum time for me to polish and uh, sand 2k We've got our Trizic 6 and 8,000 pads. And what we're going to do, we're going to take back the clear coat for two reasons. Number one, to remove any dust, which we did get a bit of dust in this clear coat. It is inevitable. It also thins the clear coat a little bit and makes it look a little bit more realistic. Thankfully, ProScale 2K is a very, very thin 2K and looks a lot better than a lot of the 2Ks out there once it dries. But, but flattening it back and polishing it up is definitely beneficial. Then we've got the ultimate polish system of the compound and polish. And we're going to bring back that beautiful shine to the bodywork from flattening it back and sanding it. So we use the compound first, which is a much more aggressive polish. And that will get out some of the deeper um, abrasions from our sanding. And then we'll use our polish as a final polish to get the smaller micro abrasions out. And it should bring back our beautiful shiny 2k clear coat so using some off cuts of old t-shirts it's a case of going around and buffing it up let it um dry up a bit and then wipe it off with another clean piece of t-shirt and take a nice high shine so that's the compound obviously be aware of any corners any raised areas where the 2k and paint is inherently thinner it is very easy to burn through with sand and papers and polish 
And then once we're done, we can get the polish, which is a much thinner, less aggressive version of the compound, and give this a gentle buff up to a nice high shine. Obviously, be wary of any A pillars because they are weak on some of these kits. And obviously, be careful of any corners, edges, and what have you. And once you're done, get another clean piece of t-shirt and give it a good buff up to a beautiful, hopefully, high shine finish. Now, if you think you need to repeat any step, you can. You can go all the way back to the sanders again or repeat the polishing and compounding process. It's up to you how far you go. Now, we've got the grills on the bonnet. These are the only part of the kit I don't particularly like. I think they're a bit too thick. I think these could have been replaced with some PE, but it's a part of the kit that goes on. We've assembled the rear lights um, there in place as well, all glued together as per the instructions. And then we've masked off around the front uh, scuttle panel, around the window wipers, and the door seals on the inner door as well. So there we go. So that's all been painted, uh, masked up, ready for paint, all around the doors as well. Uh, again, quite some time masking, a couple of hours there again, just in masking alone. With that all painted up, we can start assembling everything. So we can get the windows in the side of the doors and get the door panels in place. These are held in by CA glue. Just a tiny couple of blobs and locating points. We're going to paint under the bonnet with some model color black. So this is thinned with a drop of water and applied with a nice flat brush. And the beauty of this is it's a water-based paint over 2K, so any excess will just wipe straight off. And we're going to do the interior as well. So you could mask and spray this should you wish, but it's a tricky one to do. Uh, and I always brush paint mine because I find it a lot easier. The light lenses, we're going to do the old Sharpie trick, putting the rubber seal around the edge just by going around. And then the light units themselves assemble together. So there's a chrome piece. There's a pre-colored red piece. We need to paint around the edge of the uh, clear piece with uh, black paint and then spray the LED part of the light. This then fits on inside and is held in with a couple of dabs of CA glue. Nice and simple to do. Just checking we've got the right side and everything sat properly. And then the rear light lenses basically just click in place. So line it up, put your finger behind to hold the light and just press it, click it, job done. Nice and simple. Rear diffuser, a couple of dabs of CA glue on those locating points. There we go. So no fit issues with the kit at all. It fits absolutely perfect. The only issue I had was with the door mechanism. There's a little piece of wire that goes on the front of the door and I couldn't for the life of me get it to work. So I kind of gave up in the end. The doors open fine, but they don't stay open, which I'm not bothered about because I never display my cars with the bonnets or doors open anyway. A couple of dabs of glue to hold the uh, front bumper on and same underneath for this little panel that goes under the very front so you need to like maneuver things around to get everything to fit there we go and then we've also masked up and sprayed the silver trim panel on the steps of the door and then there's a mercedes logo which goes in there which is like one of those reverse decal types that you rub on one each side for that and then we can start some assembly so the rear body just slots over the top it kind of clips into where that rear diffuser goes, and then there's two little points at the front where it sits. If you look at instructions, you'll see it. It fits in very positively. Really nice. There we go. And then some CA glue on the side to hold the wings in place. Be very careful at this stage. Don't start getting CA glue on any of the parts and ruining them. And there we go. Just hold everything for a second or two and let the CA glue get some purchase. And then our wing mirrors, we put the wing mirror glass in, which is a double-sided, uh, a double-taped um, metallic decal that comes in the kit. A double-taped metallic decal, a self-adhesive metallic decal. Now, the clear parts, they slot in at the top, and then there's two little clips at the bottom. I found them a little bit tight, so I shortened the bottom clips a little bit, and I found they fitted in a lot better. On the front, you need to make sure the doors are in place before you put the front windscreen in. So make sure they're all in place before you commit to clipping. And I found it easier to lift the door, put your finger underneath to give it a bit of support, and then press it down. And again, I shortened the top clips on the windscreens. The bonnet just clips in place on those, uh, those two arms at the front. This allows the bonnet to open and hinge forwards and up. 
So there you go, nice positive click. And there we go. And it shuts properly as well, which is really, really nice to see. And then some of the finishing touches now, we've got the self-adhesive Mercedes label logo for the back. So line it up, get it straight, get a cotton bud and burnish it down. Then remove the tape slowly. If the decal starts to move again, repeat it. Just put it back down and repeat it. And there's several little badges for the back of the car. There we go. And that's it. For the most part, that is done. So here is the finished kit. She's looking good. All the panels shut perfectly. Uh, the green is phenomenal. Very happy with this. The engine bay is lovely. It's a really nice engine bay. Looks very impressive. Interior is nice as well. Really nice interior. Like I said, the doors do open. They just don't stay open, which is a bit of a pain. But it is what it is. It's just one of those things. There we go. There's our interior in there as well, which again looks good. Very happy with that. And so what I tend to do is I finish the car, leave it overnight to make sure any CA glue that's on the external part is fully cured. The Bob Smith's gold I use on exterior parts takes a lot longer to fully cure. Uh, so I leave it overnight and the following morning and I always give it a buff over the UMP Shine wax. Uh, that way we're not going to drag any CA glue out and ruin all our hard work. So this stuff you just wipe on. It's not abrasive. You just need to wipe it on, leave it in place, let it haze up, and buff it off. And I use one of these glasses cleaning cloths. It's a ultra fine, high quality microfiber cloth, exactly the style you use for cleaning your glasses. I got them off Amazon, and these are my preferred final polish cloths. And it's a case just going round and giving it all a nice polish up and giving it a beautiful high shine. Now I have some pictures of this at the end. Sadly, where I was showing body panels opened, I hadn't quite clicked them shut because the doors, because they're such a high tolerance kit, they do kind of click shut. So in some of the pictures at the end, it's going to look like some of the panels haven't quite shut properly. And it's purely and simply, I'm an idiot and I didn't quite shut them. But rest assured, the kit fits together perfectly. Even using 2K, which does take up some of the tolerances a little bit, Everything closed, absolutely perfect. The car sits absolutely square on its wheels, and uh, I can't recommend this kit enough. It was a brilliant build uh, of a beautiful um, McLaren. Um, I guess it's a McLaren-inspired Mercedes, or an inspired Mercedes-inspired McLaren, a collaboration between them. Um, it's a wonderful car, though, uh, uh, an absolutely beautiful model to build. So there we go, with that all nicely polished up. There we go. All done. Looking good. Beautiful MSO green. Beautiful clear coat. All nicely polished back up. That lovely ochre brown interior. Our carbon diffuser as well. That lovely engine bay, which does look absolutely brilliant. We've got our nice interior too. And yeah, very happy with this one. Uh, it turned out really, really well. So there we go. Like I said, we've got this in the kit. In your stash, sorry, I would highly recommend building it. There are two versions of it. There's a 722 version, which I believe has a different front bumper and wheels. Whichever one you build, I'm sure you're going to thoroughly enjoy. And if you have built this kit, let me know in the comments below. Or do you have it in the stash and you plan to build it? And here we go. Some finished final picks of the kit. It looks great in these pictures. This is its proper colour that I can see. Um, the cameras play with the colour a little bit. So the actual, uh, my Canon R10. DSLR or mirrorless DSLR it does pick the color up properly. Uh, and yeah, what a wonderful kit. So, this was primed in Pro Scale Grey Primer, painted in Pro Scale Mercedes MSO Green, clear coated in our Pro Scale 2K system. The wheels were Pro Scale Stainless Steel, the brakes were Pro Scale Carbon Ceramic, calipers Pro Scale Titanium Gold. Uh, the interior is a combination of Pro Scale Ochre Brown Leather, Napa Black Leather, and Pro Scale Black Flock. Engine bay, a combination of um, LP5 from Tamiya, LP7, um, some Tamiya enamels, and some uh, ProScale uh, metallics in there as well. Um, and that's it. Well, I can't say any more about the kit. It's a phenomenal kit to build. It's a kit I definitely put off building for some time because it is quite a complex build. But to be honest, um, other than the multiple part bodies, it was actually a joy to build. Uh, and put together so 
I would highly recommend it. It's a far cry from the next kit we're going to build, which you'll see shortly on the channel, uh, which is the McLaren F1 from Fujimi, which was a stupidly basic kit, a real disappointment. But we're going to make up for that after the McLaren F1 by building the brand new Tamiya Gordon Roy Automotive T50. I have a plan to go through all the McLarens and some of the Gordon Murray cars as well. So this is uh, my starting point. The McLaren F1's next, then the Gordon Murray T50. Then we're probably going to do the uh, McLaren P1 from Alpha Models and then the Tamiya uh, McLaren Senna. And that will do all the main McLarens for me. So there we go. There's Tamiya's Mercedes McLaren SLR. So we'll go back to me for some final thoughts. So there we go, another one off the bench. Um, what a great fun kit that was to build. Um, no issues with the kit, other than me not being able to get those um, door hinge metal pin things working. I just couldn't figure out how they went in place. Um, it doesn't really bother me because I'll never display it with the doors open. Um, just a great kit. Absolutely brilliant. Comes with window mask in there. Um, full engine, beautiful interior um you know the bonnet opens the doors open you've got removable panels on the side should you wish to show more as well and just a great kit all around i really can't fault it at all i really can't the only thing i would like to see is photo etch it would have been nice to get some photo etch in there but that's few and far between with tamir to get any photo etch in the kit so yeah great build happy to get this one off the bench and it's the start of my journey in doing um the mclaren trinity and the t50 gordon murray as i said through the video i've done this we've done the f1 which is done it's there there it is mclaren f1 that's the next video build you're going to see um we're then going to do the gordon murray t50 uh then it'll be the mclaren p1 from alpha models and then the tamiya uh mclaren senna will be after that so i want to do all the mclaren cars and the gordon murray car um just a something to do it was just a plan i had and they're all epic kits uh bar the fujimi f1 which isn't a great kit um yeah so that is the plan like i say you can get the full video builds of this over on my patreon this is super condensed there was 22 hours of footage of this build it was an immense amount of time spent building this and that equated to four 30 minute videos over on my patreon which has all been condensed down into a 40 minute video over here. So there's loads of detail missed out. Um, you can pick, become a patron in the link down below. You can become a patron for as little as £3.50. Um, we'll get you access to most of the things on there. I think £6 is my recommended one. Um, and that gives you a month's early access in all the videos. You get the full video builds and a condensed video build early as well. Uh, you get added to a patron exclusive uh, Facebook Messenger chat group, which you're all in, which you chat about stuff all day long in there's a facebook group on there um you can also vote on builds you get uh build uh finished builds earlier over on patreon as well pictures of the finished kit up uh, and you keep supporting this you keep me being able to make these videos for you guys out there uh you can request reviews uh you get a weekly um saturday supporter bench update every single week uh and yeah if you want to come and support us link down below in the description there's also paypal me and buy me coffee link if you want to do one off donation and there's links down there to everything else involved myself post scale paints um all the facebook page um my other channels down there uh, there's links to ump as well um and uh there's an email address to get in touch with everyone drop me an email my stash is down there my etsy store where i sell my built models there's all sorts in the description down below, as well as a list of all the products I use in my videos as well. If you see me using something in this video, if you go to that list, you'll more than likely find it. But if you get stuck, drop me a message on Facebook or drop me an email and I'll always answer you back. So there we go. Another video off the bench. Uh, I thank you all for watching today and I especially thank all my patrons whose names are going to pop up on screen at the end of this video. Make sure you sub to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. Click that bell notification to get notified of the latest videos. And please leave a comment. Love reading all your comments on the videos. They always spur me along. It can take me a while to reply because I do get quite a lot. I've got two channels to run. Patreon, Facebook groups, a business to run, everything. And come on over and check out ProScale Paint as well. 
uh, which is my company. You can come over there, have a look at all the paints we've got. If you've got any requests, give us a shout and we'll try and mix you one up. But I think my models and the paints and what have you are speaking for themselves at the minute. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Thanks for watching, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.